Welcome back to another day on the bus build. Everyone's gone. It's just me and Dale. Everyone left. Just the other day, Will headed out, Alex headed out, Rita headed out, Travis and Michelle headed out. Bye, Rush. Bye, bye. Kristen. Bye, Rome. Rome, can you say bye? Bye. 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 Hey, Dale. Hey, Mike. At least he didn't drop his drive shaft like the last bus. Sad to see him go. I guess it's just me and you. you. I don't know what you're standing there for, man. You need to get some work done. I'm just filming you, filming me. Okay, I'm done. Uh, and I decided to stick around actually for another week. So I'm actually gonna be returning to New York a week later than I thought. Uh, and that's because we ended up having to do some modifications to the door here. And we still gotta get some roof deck mounts in and some other things that we're just gonna take a little bit extra time. And I didn't want Dale driving up the highway to New York 17 hours or 19 hours without a door. Yeah, it's gonna be the me and Dale show because you know, it's just us. The me and Dale show? It's, really? the, me, it's the me and Dale show, man, well, it's just us. Let's just hope it's not a comedy of errors, all right? Y'all stay tuned, it should be special. Well, just got my list made. I love my lists. Lists always keep you organized. Dale, what do you think is going to be the first on the list? What do you want to do first? Well, I think it's uh, time for a parts run here in just a few minutes. Oh, I got to yeah. show you this tool, actually. We probably do have a parts run coming up first just because uh, we've been cutting all of our sheet metal and stuff with this grinder, you know, just a cut wheel. And then he pulls this amazing machine out of his shed and is like, oh, I got a bandsaw metal cutter. There again, Habitat for Humanities Restores. You just never know what you're going to find. This saw was mounted on this table. But the main reason I bought it is because I wanted this roll around table as a workbench, not so much the saw. But who knows? You may be seeing this in future videos because I pretty much already told Mike if he wants me to bring it to New York with me when I come, he'd be the first person I'd say, hey, you want this piece of good 50 year old technology? The answer to Dale's question is yeah, he should probably bring that to New York. We'll get it fixed up, we'll get it running. I love old stuff. I have an old uh, DeWalt saw from like the 1930s. Thing runs like a champ. This thing, I bet it's the same way. They just don't make tools like this anymore. It does need a little work. The tool officially works, which means we're gonna have a much easier time making out this door frame for Dale. Three things we noticed. Probably needs a new blade, definitely needs a new belt because this guy's gonna rip, and it actually doesn't have an on-off switch, so the only way to turn it off is to unplug it. But besides that, it just cut that, you know, bus rail guard like it was butter. We just got the metal bandsaw figured out, new belt, new blade, new all that. And now that we have it all set, we can start getting the measurements for this door opening, try to figure out what we gotta cut, what the 45s are gonna look like, you know, get a bunch of measurements and figure out how we're gonna do this.
At this point, we have our steel beams and our new frame set. So now what we have to do is actually get this door to fit inside. It's about a quarter of an inch too big, so we're just gonna trim off a little bit off the side. And then the hope is, is that it's gonna sit right inside the spacing. And then we will be able to, you know, you can kind of see that it's flushed in. Uh, the main reason why we had to do this was because none of our angles actually matched. So on a Thomas bus, there's a four degree angle right here, and then it levels out right here. This side is consistently at a four degree angle. So if we would have been trying to put the door in before, the door would have just been all cattywankus and not able to really go in too well. So what we need to do is get this thing squared up, get the door cut, and hopefully it all just goes right together. The door is in and it's all square, which was something we were very worried about. But uh, now what we have to do is we're gonna have to be taking out all the screws that we just put in to test it. And up here, there's an opening. So I gotta take a piece of sheet metal and I gotta kind of flash that out to protect from water. Then we gotta put some uh, beetle tape all throughout here. And then, you know, just a bunch of caulk, get it all sealed up. But this door is gonna work and this pretty much means, Dale. I can come to New York. You can come to New York. Without this too is much problem. Yeah, without too much. So definitely a bit of metal work left to do. Man, this was a huge step. We were really worried about this. The door we just tested, it's all good to go. I just spot welded all the old holes for the old bus doors, but you can really see as Dale was just actually talking to me about how we inset this frame and you can really see the curve now right here on the bus. And that's why we had to inset it because the actual door wouldn't have set flush right up against here. So now that we've got this guy welded in, all of our door frames all in, now we're gonna prime it, make sure that everything's all good to go once we prime it. And then all I gotta do is put a piece of sheet metal bent up there and then the door can officially go on in. A winner to me. I know a lot of people in the last video were asking, why are we doing an RV door instead of just keeping the bus doors? Like what was your what was your reasoning? Well, originally it was gonna actually make the, the, the width of the door wider because the bus door technically, even when it's open, is still out here. This is a 32 inch opening. I originally bought a 32 inch door which would fit this perfectly except for this curve. So what we had to do is I took that door back, we went and got a 30 inch door and then inset it as you see you might just explain. And that still gives me a wider door opening than if the bus door was here. Plus it was an electric door, it wasn't really opening and closing properly so rather than try to even worry about fixing that, it's just these doors, I paid it's like $225 for the door, maybe what $50, $60 for the frame. So it, it can be pricey but it, it's all about what do you want and that's what I want in, in mind. It's just for me, it's I like that kind of door rather than the bus door. Now that we got the sheet metal put up there, the door is tested, set in. 
Now it's just a bunch of screwing and caulking and waterproofing and things like that, but final doors here. Dale, you think you're gonna paint the door? I think we I talked think, about I think I am. I'm just because it's a wide door and my color scheme is gray and black, so I may I'm trying to decide do I, do I should I paint the door gray or should I just go ahead and paint it black? I don't know. I may I may paint it black and then if I don't like it, paint over it and make it gray again. Well, you're a full grown man, you can do whatever you want. That's pretty much my philosophy in life. <laughs> if you don't like it, change it. This guy right here is just passing out sage advice and words of wisdom. You ki you young kids are just easily impressed is all it really is. Well, doors in, it's all caulked and sealed. Uh, Dale's eventually actually gonna paint all of this black, all the framing, the uh, aluminum, the upper piece up there. So uh, we just kind of left the caulk. So right now you can see all of our caulk lines, you can see the primer up there, and then all of this uh, aluminum right here, eventually Dale's gonna paint when I leave. So we can check this one off the book. Yeah, and then we can move on to what? Want to get the driver's seat in? Let's get the seat in, yep. get, the, get the mirrors on, and then like I said, then we can Cut the other two little projects we got left to do. In a previous video, uh, we actually deconstructed Dale's chair and put it on a swivel. So now, with this arm right here, the seat's actually gonna swivel like you've probably seen in a lot of van conversions. Um, so we had to redrill the holes down here. Dale's gonna drop the bolts down, and I'm gonna head underneath the bus to then put all of the nuts on and lock washers. The seat's almost going in, and then we get to see it swivel, make sure it actually works. Got the seat in, Mike. How does it work? Looks like it's gonna be all right. All the mirrors are back on. So now Dale's got a seat in, mirrors back in, the door is in. So at this point, all we gotta do is get some things mounted up on the roof and then put all the windows back in and caulk them sealed. And Dale. You and I have had a great day, haven't we? We have had a great day. Yeah, we got a lot done. A lot of, a lot of really tricky things. This door is really honestly one of my uh, biggest concerns just because of the angles and stuff. But you know, now that that's pretty much past it, uh, kind of on the home stretch here. All right, back to another day. We moved the bus into a new location, but we have a couple jobs left on the list. One of them is actually, we gotta get these guys in. Uh, we gotta get this one in, and we gotta actually put these windows in, and then Dale's gonna have a pretty sealed up bus on the outside. Sir. Sure. And then the last thing we gotta do is we're actually gonna be putting up his roof deck mounts. We're not gonna be actually doing the rooftop deck here in Florida, we're gonna do it up in New York, uh, but we wanna get all the mounts put on because we have them right now and the less that Dale has to bring with him inside of the bus and something that's already mounted is gonna be a lot easier. I just wish we could have gotten those solar panels mounted in time. Well, you know, we got a lot done. Sometime later on we'll be uh, reviewing the checklist in here and we'll just exactly see how many jobs we got done. Yeah. I think there's only gonna be maybe one or two things that's not checked off. I think so. So We're gonna get going on these guys right here and uh, you know, go put them in.
Well, now we got both windows in, one window delete, and Dale already put the other ones in, so all I had to do was caulk those up. But we have one window delete left to put in, and then we're gonna move on to doing some roof deck mounts. But I actually wanted to talk to you about these window deletes, because uh, my friend Luke over at schoolie.com is actually the one who makes these. If you've watched my previous videos, you know that I've made these myself with a hammer, a homemade you know, metal break, and just swinging away at it until they're made. So if you don't want to spend your time hammering away trying to make your own window deletes, which you can do, uh, you can go check out my friend schoolie.com's website. He custom makes these, like I said. Uh, he also makes a whole bunch of other products that we're actually going to be installing on this bus. I've got one of his roof deck mounts right here, which uh, mount up to the roof and give you a base on the curved roof to actually start building out a rooftop deck. Um, and a whole bunch of other products. And as you probably saw in the B-roll, in terms of these window deletes, they're really easy to put in because all you really have to do is put some beetle tape or some type of caulking material down on the bottom, seat the window in, and then just put it into place, screw from the sides, top and bottom, and they're uh, pretty much sealed up, exterior caulk, and you're good to go. So if you're interested in getting any of these window deletes, rooftop deck mounts, or anything else over on Luke's website at schoolie.com, just use the discount code below and it will give you 5% off his entire store. Do know that that is a discount code that is an affiliate, so not only will you be getting a 5% of discount, Navigation Nowhere will be receiving a commission at no cost to you. So I just want to say thank you, uh, you know, for supporting Navigation Nowhere, this window deletes over at schoolie.com, because he is a fellow bus lifer and started his own business doing this. And I really hope that these window deletes help you just level up your build or just make it easier easier for you to complete your project. But uh, me and Dale have one more to put in. Dale, I don't know why you're sitting down. We got more, one more to put in here. Dale wants to say something. I just want to say that these window deletes, I paid the full price for them, didn't get a discount, and I'm that's the, some of the best money I've spent so far on my build out. They're quality products. As long as you send him the right measurements, you shouldn't have a problem. They fit like a glove. And like Mike has said earlier, they'll save you hours in time. All right, windows are all done and caulked. We're just moving along, checking things off the list like Dale said just before. I think we only got like one or two things left. So next thing we gotta do is we're gonna be putting in those roof deck mounts that we just talked about and get those kind of lined up, set on the roof so that we can get them all bolted in. And then at that point, uh, Dale, you're ready. I can get on the road. You can get on the road. So you probably can't see them in the background right here, but we just gridded out our roof channels and everything. But these roof deck mounts, the way that they're designed, if you look at them, is they're kind of like oddly shaped holes. They're, they're a little uh, ovally. And the reason why Luke did that was because these are actually designed where they can hit the hat channels on International, Thomas, Bluebird, shuttle buses, any type of bus out there. Um, because you may not notice this because I don't know how many buses you've seen in your life, uh, but not every hat channel is created equal. These right here are hat channels. And this is specifically a Thomas body. So the way this is designed is to essentially sit on top of the roof just like that and then screw into the flanges on either side. The problem is not every hat channel width is the same between bus manufacturers and that's why these are a little oval. But now that I have all of our lines drilled and we know where our hat channels are up on the roof, uh, all we have to do now is line up our bottom plates and then we just gotta self tap these down into those uh, hat channel flanges and that's what's gonna hold this thing on there. 
if you're looking to do this and you don't know how to weld and stuff, uh, these are really great options because these can be installed after a conversion or during a conversion because they're just self-tapping screws into the flanges so you don't actually have to do any bolts on the inside. So if you're not ripping your metal roof out or you've already finished your bus and the ceiling's already in, these can still work. We've got six to install here and uh, we're gonna get on into it. Okay, well we got one side completely installed and you can see that this one actually has one of the cleat feet on it. Um, this actual foot, the way that it's made is now you can set it you know, to whatever angle you need to make it square so that you don't have to worry about the curved roof anymore. Um, also, I just want to point this out because I realize that not everyone knows how to weld out there. These brackets that I have, um, these are weldable, which means we're gonna be welding our roof rack, but they are also made where they're bolt-on tops, where you can actually just get them where they have a flange, and then you can just bolt in whatever you're trying to use. So uh, I'm gonna be welding, but don't worry, you don't have to necessarily. You can always just get the ones that are made uh, for bolt-on max, bolt-on racks. Whew. This side's done, that side's next, and then we're done. All right, and we got all of them racked up on up here, and I'll show you what they look like on the inside, because Dale was actually on the inside watching all the bolts go in to make sure that they hit where we wanted them to. Look at that. So you can see right here that on this side, we have all the holes perfectly kind of drilled into these channels, so they're all gonna be held in uh, to these actual hat channels, but they're done, and now this summer, we're ready to put a rooftop deck on this thing, right, Dale? Yes, sir. So not only that, but I think we're pretty much done with the list. I know. We need to go in and do a check. Oh, let's do that. Well, let me get the, let me get a marker. All right, Dale's gonna get a marker. We're gonna check out this list. If you guys watched the first episode so far of the Slacker Boss build series, uh, we made this list right here of all the things that we tried to get done. Um, there's a lot of things to get done in like three weeks, but I think we did it. Well, at least we'll find out. All right, well, we got pretty much, like we were just saying, almost everything on the list done. Only missed three things that we purposely delayed until we get up north, but Dale, you're officially ready, and like you were saying, in a month and a half, month, to head on up to New York, and then we can build out the inside of this thing. So if you're following this actual build series, the Slacker Bus build series, uh, we're gonna be discontinuing it for a little bit. It will continue back up in the summer when Dale comes up. In the next episode, we're actually gonna be back in New York working on Ivan. So I gotta catch a plane and I'll see you in New York. And I will say this, just so you know, maybe I'll probably do an update on my own channel just to keep you updated with the little bit that I am doing. So if you feel like you wanna waste five minutes, come on over to my channel and see how the slackers do it. See ya. See ya.